Oh, no counting. I-, I wanted to show the boys uh, that video, that TikTok one. This is uh, just a little recap, guys, um, of me saying hello to people. Mm. Okay, remember last week. <laughs> <laughs> remember last week of asking you know about saying hello to people? You got a good memory. I barely remember last week. This is me. It's a shame. It's morning. Morning. <laughs> Nothing. I go fuck myself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That's, pretty, a, that's pre- right. Pretty that's much, accurate. Pretty much every day, guys. All right. So once again, it was me, not everybody else. It's just me. I'll go fuck myself. <laughs> this is the Beers and BS podcast, sponsored by one of the locals. Under the Sun inserts, Brewport Coffee House, and Brewport Cafe. And now here's your hosts, Adrian, Joe, and Mike. Nice. Uh, I was waiting for it. Yeah. Give it to me. See what you have. Uh, episode 20. 20 in the house. Special guest. I take you to the cage. Pretty Ford. Go ahead, girl. Don't you stop. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Beers and BS, the podcast. We are your hosts. As always, we have Mike D, whoop, whoop. Joey, Yo, I'm up? Adrian, we got Gabe representing down in Tennessee. Gabe, what's going Gabe, on, guys? Sure. What's up, Gabe? Tonight, Hi, we got- Gabe. <laughs> tonight, we have somebody, a uh, special guest sitting in our fourth chair tonight. He is uh, owner and CEO of Fred Ford Life Success. Uh, he's a published author, which he's got a book coming out this year, Freddie? This year. This yes. year? Okay, coming out. Um, think and grow thin. He's also a motivational speaker, but more importantly, he's our friend. Yeah. Okay. And it's Freddie Ford guys. All right. Freddie, Freddie Ford. Thank you for being here, bro. Thanks for having me. All right. Freddie, <clears throat> um, Freddie lives around the corner from, uh, from us. I do. I walk by here just about every day. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I've seen you out there. Yeah. Stomping the pavement. Shugging. Um, and he has a very, uh, very interesting story that we're going to get into. And, um, there's a lot of things going on with Freddie. Freddie is a very interesting guy and, uh, he's got his hands in a lot of things and I think it's very cool. And that's why we wanted to have him on. Um, Also, he's a funny bastard as well. Uh, (laughs) anyway, we start off every episode guys with, uh, we tell the audience what we're drinking. Walk us to the club. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Uh, You know what we gotta do? We gotta get a fade out button. I have. Are you you doing? I'm working on it. All right. Good. Practice. All right. Maybe 21, guys. Episode 21. We'll have that. Um, but, um, yeah, so we start off every show, tell the audience what we're drinking. Um, ooh, somebody. That was that was a nice sound. Yeah. That was a crack. Well, you know, Joe, let me just get that started. That was me. Yeah? All right. What do you got, buddy? I'm drinking uh, uh, Sam Adams' new product called Sun Cruiser. So cool. I've never taken a sip yet. It's about to happen for the first time. This is just hitting the market all over the country. Uh, literally. Ice literally tea? Uh, today. It's, it's, unra- it's been unrolled. Or unraveled, uh, is that the right word? Yeah. Unveiled. Unveiled. Thank you. Uh, brand new product. It's classic iced tea with vodka, four and a half percent alcohol. It's very. It's got summer vibes all over this thing, man. Did you get that from uh, your your Sam Adams rep? I did. You did from uh, a, a friend of the show, Jamie. Gave it to me. Uh, yeah. All right. So cheers. Good hookup. Cheers, Michael. What do you got, buddy? Ooh. So I, I went with um. So. I was searching for beers and I saw this product and I thought of uh, some people dear to us have uh, gluten allergies and, yes. and they're very limited what they could drink. Although they can drink what Joey just held up, right? That is a gluten free product as well. But this is Red Bridge. It's uh, Anheuser Busch came out with a beer that is uh, gluten free. And um, oh. so it gives them options, you know what I mean? Nice. The alcohol content's a little low for my, my tasting, but. Uh, they, <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, right? no, um, but it, it's funny you say that because usually, like the gluten beers uh, that I've experienced, right. it's kind of high, like oh, six, really? and, six and above. Okay, so that's that's a little surprising that yeah. it's so low. Well, um, all right. Well, what I got, Freddie is drinking water tonight, right? Yeah, I got yeah. A Ten and, pound Yeti full of water. Yeah, uh, we're and in about two minutes, we'll tell you. You'll everybody will know why <laughs> Freddie's drinking water. Um, tonight, I have. Uh, I went back to Montauk. Drinking a Montauk Juicy IPA. Nice. Um, I'm a big fan. I, yeah, I, I, I love too. I love a lot of the Montauk beers. Um, I drank it several times on the pod. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I don't know. I was in the in the beer distributor today, and it was just calling my name, so I went back to it. Nice. Montauk. Yep. Nice. Gabe, okay, what do you got, bud? Uh, today I am I am with Freddie. I'm drinking water because last week I got too fucked up. 
All right. Look at you. <laughs> For those that I uh, remember. Alcohol, uh, con- alcohol content is 0. 0.0. <laughs> For those uh, that remember last week, uh, Gabe recorded his podcast first, had a special guest, and uh, hit the whiskey a little early. There, uh, there was an entire bottle of uh, Elijah James, Elijah Craig, that was drank during my podcast, which was a two-hour podcast. No. I did not have anything to eat before that. So, yeah, that was a big... It, it made big, a good show. I don't know. I can't go back and listen to it because I was storing my words. <laughs> um, all right. Very good, Gabe. I'm glad to see that you're, uh, you're back. Uh, is it on the way? You're right. It's on the way. Right? He's, uh, not, he's on well, the wagon. I'm, I'm, no, I'm 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 kind of like riding the edge of the wagon. I'm not off the wagon. I'm not on the wagon. I'm just, you know, I need to be responsible from now on, and that's all I'm doing. Okay, okay. Hey, look at you. Hey, I like it, right? Yeah. Self discipline to continue you know, to continue next week. It's we'll see it's, what happens. it's never too late. Okay, it's never too late to start acting responsible. <laughs> With that being said, that takes us into Freddie Ford. Okay, <laughs> what an intro, <laughs> uh, Freddie. You okay? I've known you for a long time, right? You have recently gone through a major physical transformation. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm sure that's led to other transformations as far as you know, maybe mentally, you know, in other ways, spiritually. I, you know, I don't know. You know, we, we could talk about it. Yeah. But I'm saying, you know, the, uh, the most obvious to us and people that know you is a physical transformation. Physical. Okay. Um, can we? Get, oh, that's that, perfect. That, that was that was that was good. Whatever you did there, Joe. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. Can we, um, can we, first off, how old are you, Freddie? I'm 64. 64 years old. Okay. He looks fucking great, man. Seriously. Yeah, he does. Still got my hair. Yeah. God bless him. Not all all of it's gray. No, no. I think I got more gray hair than you. Yeah. Um, 64 years old. Okay. And you, you made the choice, right, to make a change in your life at what age? 61. 60. So I was 61 years old. We went down to Disney World to celebrate my, actually, 2019, we went to Disney World to celebrate my 60th birthday. We went to Animal Kingdom, and there was a ride called uh, Flights of uh, the Avatar, the Indoor. Yeah. Yes. Oh, great. Yes. I haven't been on it, but. <clears throat> well, Indoor I loved it. 3D uh, motion detector type, you know, one of those type motion it's unbelievable. Ride. Wait, so we went in, we yeah. waited. I was with my daughter, Lila, who was still in high school at the time. And we went, we waited an hour to get on the ride and we got onto our little banshees and the, it, it's a low riding, it's like a low riding uh, motorcycle and you sit on it and then the harness comes in and clicks into place. Right. The harness comes, they couldn't get it on me. I was too uh, fat. Oh no. So they said, we got to lead you off them. Sorry. Uh, I was pissed. Yeah. Uh, I get up. I'm embarrassed for my daughter and my wife. I was. I felt ashamed. I felt angry. We left, and they didn't say anything. Uh, a few months later, I said, "I got to step on the scale and see how much I weighed." I was 61 years old, and I weighed 350.2 pounds. Wow. I stepped off the scale. I said, "This got to oh, be wrong." Shit, I stepped man. back on 350.2, and the first thought that came to my mind was. I'm closer to 400 pounds than I am 300. I had tried to lose weight for 25 years. The most weight I had ever lost was 50 pounds. Here I was at 350. I'm like, if I lose the most I've ever lost, I'm still going to be over 300. And at that moment, I said, I'm going to get all my personal development stuff together that I've used for, you know, to, to succeed in writing books and money and business relationships. I said, I'm going to use all this stuff, I'm going to put a program together for myself and I'm going to get down to my fighting weight. And I decided I was going to weigh 205 pounds. Wow. Now, who the hell am I at 61? I'm going to lose three times the best I've ever done over 25 years. 150 pounds. 145. 145. And, uh, can, I, can I ask you why that number? Why 205? Well, I got a picture of myself my senior year of college when I was 205, and I go, that's what I'm going to look like. So I got that picture, and I planted it in my subconscious mind, and I said, that's the image I'm going to look at every day, which I have now for 984 days, not that I'm counting. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm going to read the goal. So I got out my – I read a book called Think and Grow Rich in 1996. Didn't want to read it. It was given to me by a business partner. 
And he said, this is the book you got to read. And I, all right, I read it. I loved it. And there was a template in that book that showed how to create a goal. So you write down the exact amount of money you're going to have, the date you're going to have it, what you're going to do in exchange for the date, for the, uh, for the goal. And I did that. I wrote it out on an index card and I read the index card first thing in the morning, last thing at night for a year and two months. I had a year goal and it, I went two months over, but I manifested a, a, a huge goal. I did that five or six different times during my life. And I decided, you know, why can't I do this with a physical goal? So I said, all right, let me figure out how long it's going to take me at 350 to get to 205. The most, the, the, the average weight that I would be comfortable losing was five or six pounds a month. I said, all right, five and a half pounds a month. How long is it going to take me? And it was two years and two months. And it came right to my wife's birthday, May wow. 3rd, 2023. I said, wow, okay, it's meant to be. So I got out my index card and I started to write. Honor before May 3rd. 2023. I'm so happy and grateful now that I, and I swear to you, I dropped my pen and I went, think and grow thin. I'm going to fucking think and grow thin. Are you kidding me? Why did I never think of this before? And uh, I picked the pen back up. I wrote out the index card. I had it oh, laminated. Okay. I had the card laminated. Wow. I've been carrying it with me for now. Well, the original due date of May 3rd, 2023 has come and gone. I'm in my 220s now, so I've lost 125 pounds. I still have 20 to go. Don't bet against me. <laughs> no. Because I'm no going to get there. Just to get it. Right? And uh, that was the start of it. It was 60. I was 61 years old. I have heart disease in my family. I was way overweight. I was embarrassed by that uh, whole episode at the Avatar ride. And... Uh, I just wrote out a goal and I said, that's it. I'm going to do this. And uh, have you gone back to Disney since? Well, we went back, my wife and I, after I lost 100 pounds. Oh, right. I saw you at the airport that day. I remember right. that morning? I saw you at the airport. <laughs> I had lost 100 pounds. I got onto an airplane and for the first time in 25 years, I was able to not ask the, the flight attendant for the extender belt, right? I was able to put that the regular belt on. I almost cried. We went to the Avatar. We went to the Animal Kingdom. There I am. Can I see that? That's me on the left, you know, when I was 350, and that's me on the right with and my wife. Listen, little just side note, we'll talk about this after the pod, okay? Yeah. You have to tell me about the deal that your wife made with the devil, yeah. okay? The fact that she's looked this, she has looked exactly <laughs> the same, if not probably better, for she's, over 20 years, awesome. okay? My it's, wife. it's just amazing, all right? Unbelievable. God bless you, buddy. So, so what we go to... Uh, Animal Kingdom. Now, again, I've lost 100 pounds. It's three years later. It's our anniversary, our 30th wedding anniversary. And as we're walking toward Avatar, my wife says, tentatively, do you want to go on Avatar? And I didn't even look at her and I said, yes. Yeah. So we go to Avatar and we go on and my heart is pumping. Right like to that the guy moment from, that it's oh, green light, like, right? If this like thing doesn't <laughs> fit around me, I'm, we sat down. The thing came in, click. Yes. Yeah. The ride was great, but honestly, fitting on the ride the was achievement. more thrilling yeah. Than, yeah. than the ride itself. We came off the ride. We took two steps outside, and I dropped to my knees, and I cried my eyes out. I literally cried from my soul. I didn't realize wow. how much pain and shame and embarrassment I had been carrying around with me for 25 years. And the first thing I did is I texted my daughter and I said, Lila, I just want to let you know, I fit on the Avatar ride and I will never be fat again. No more embarrassment, no more shame. And the, and the cherry to the Sunday is she texts back, Daddy, I was you never embarrassed me. You there know? you go. Oh, man. And I decided right then and there that for my coaching business, I was going to create a program called Think and Grow Thin. I was going to write a book, Think and Grow Thin. I was going to share that with as many people as I could. Because if, if, if I could help people to experience what I experienced when I came off that avatar ride, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And that's really what, a, what you know, kind of put the whole thing in motion. Yeah. So, and, and you're in the process, right? Think and Grow Thin should be coming out this year? It will be coming out this year. Okay. Well, um, I have a publisher all lined up. I'm working with a staff of about eight people. We're going to be doing social media. We're going to be doing. Uh, uh, we're going to be doing uh, paid advertisements. He's going to put me on stages internationally. 
sorry, uh, Gabe just has Gabe has your promo up right now. Could you just this is about the program? Yeah, this is just a short. Uh, it's a, it's called a video business card, which basically tells you know about the program, what what I do. I I put myself through the program first, so I'm a product of the product, um, and that's really when you, if you're a coach who has gone through the program that you're coaching that's the guy you want or the yeah. girl you want a woman you want you have to have somebody who knows it who has internalized it who's now going to show you how to get through it there's so many people who are like me who are in their 50s or 60s had tried and failed a million times on diets on that weight loss weight gain roller coaster confused about what to eat um tried everything and i you know i was in that position. I, I didn't believe I could lose the weight, but then you know, I said, I'm going to write this down. I am that weight right now at, on March 14th, 2021 is when I started. And I've, I've operated as if I live, I was weighed 205 pounds from that day forward. And it's just been very gradual. And that, here I am. That's okay. amazing, Freddie. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank that's, you. that really is, I had the chills most of that conversation. Um, that's really good. So uh, I, other than how you look, because you look amazing, and I know you were embarrassed on how you look, how do you feel? Oh, I feel... Well, how different do you feel than you did I feel, three years ago? Um, it's, it's night and day. I'm lighter on my feet. I sleep better. I have more energy. When I look in the mirror, I'm not embarrassed. Yeah. I'm not ashamed. I'm not pissed that I let myself get this fat. Um, I'll tell you what the... the, the uh, the, the turning point was uh, in, in terms of what I'm eating. Um, I didn't know what I was going to eat when I started. I just said, I'm going to start eating more healthy. And I said a prayer, divinely guide me because I don't know what to do. I literally I put it in God's hands. Yep. And I, a week later, I was in the Barnes and Noble store and I was walking to up the, in the Smith Haven Mall. And I went up to the second floor on the escalator and I went to the, I was going to buy a new novel. And as I'm walking, I, my head swiveled like this and i caught sight of a book whole food plant-based eating and i'm like i'm a meat eater whole food plant-based after yeah. that and i kept going went downstairs bought the book left i couldn't get that incident out of my head here's barnes and noble with a hundred thousand books on display and my head at that moment swiveled to a book that said whole food plant-based a week after i said a prayer so i said all right i'll look into whole food plant-based eating and I studied it for two weeks consecutively. And the, 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 the one that really kicked me, they, they talk about how whole food plant-based eating can help you reverse heart disease. Now I had heart disease in my family. I was 61, I was 350 pounds. I was a heart attack waiting to happen. This guy, Dr. Neil Barnard, was talking about how it can reverse heart disease, whole food plant-based eating. And then he said, the scary part about heart disease is that for a lot of people, the first time they realize they have it is when they die of a heart attack. Mm. And I went home and I said to my wife, I want to try whole food plant-based. That was March 14th of 2021. We've been on it ever since. And uh, She's on it with you. She, she, she wanted to go on it anyway, mm -hmm. but I'm a steak eater. I like chicken. I like fish. I like- Do all those know, cravings eventually go away? For that? Yes. They all went away. I don't have any craving. I crave the stuff I eat now. You know, it Do didn't happen overnight. Do but you I, eat like plant-based like burgers and stuff like that? I do a little bit, but we do uh, like tempeh. Tempeh is a fermented soy product and instead of corned beef. So you have a, a tempeh Reuben it, or a, a vegan Reuben, they call it. I don't use the, the phrase vegan because vegan has all kinds of political ramifications. Yeah. Save the animals and the planet. Right, right. I did it for selfish reasons to lose weight. Right. And that's, I love eating this way. I don't have a craving. I've had a couple steaks. I had steak at Teller's on my birthday, the first year, and I ate about five bites. And my wife said, "How do you like it?" And I'm like, "It just doesn't taste the same to me. I, I I don't have I and I don't crave it now. I just don't. It's uh, I crave the stuff that I eat now. It's uh, it, it's it, I've, my, I've completely changed my taste buds and the way I eat, and uh, I'm loving it. I, I it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle change, yeah. and that's uh, that's where I'm at. Well. well Guys, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I was going to say, uh, you know, the reason why I emphasize, I want to bring up your age right away and ask you because most people say when they're making changes like this, you know, uh, at my age, you know, it's it's kind of like it's 
something, you know, you say, I mean, I know I've said, you know, we talked about this on the pod about like, you know, going skiing. I'm like, at my age, I'm not going to try skiing. You know what I mean? Things like that. You, you know, you, you tend to lean on that as a crutch, as an excuse. So that's why I wanted to bring up because I knew, I knew you were over 60 because I was with you on your 60th birthday. I think we were at Avino's and you just celebrated your 60th birthday. You were yeah. in there and we had a drink. Um, so I knew, you know, um, you, you were definitely over 60 to make such a significant change. And when you say you're a product of the product, first off, I love that. I mean, that, yeah. that's, you, you got to coin that. You know what I mean? If it's yeah. not already, that is, I, I love that phrase being that you're a product of the product. I would, you know, if it was me that was trying to get on this plan, seeing you went through it, you did it. And I've right. always had more respect. Like I've had, you know, instructors, you know, through my job and the academy and, and, and things. And, you know, when they're, when they're PT and us and they're, you know, putting us through all this physical training, they're there doing it with right. us. You know what I mean? So right. it's not like they're just giving you commands and you're doing it. You know, we're down, you know, we're doing a hundred pushups there. He's down there. He's doing a hundred pushups. Yeah. He or she, you know, whoever it was. And you have, you just had that respect. You yeah. know what I mean? Where it's like, how can I complain when he's down you know, they're no. right next to us doing this. So you are, you know, they were a product of the product. Right. You are a product of the product. That I think carries so much weight. And the fact that you did it, you know what I mean? At your age. And right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that 60 is, you know, I know we, we've talked about age before, right? Yeah. How, you know, times have changed. You know, right. you know what I mean? We've talked about like, you know, we're all close. We're all pushing 50. Right. Easy. <laughs> well, we are, right? <laughs> oh, and, yeah. Right. We are. Um, and how we just think it's different. I see 50 different than, like when my dad was 50. Sure. Right. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. And, and it's different. I, I see it different with you. You got to lose the story. You know, you got to, you got to break from the status quo. Um, how many people are 60 or 50 and they're, they're, uh, they've embraced the idea that it's hard to lose weight after 50 or 60. Bullshit. It's not hard. If you put it in your mind, you're going to do something, you're going to do it. Age is irrelevant. I, I honestly believe that. Well, how do you teach that self-discipline? You know, uh, because it's not just weight loss. Everybody has crutches, right? Right. And uh, the mindset, right? How do you uh, create the mindset? I mean, for me, honestly, I, I just I feel like everything that comes to it, self-discipline. You know, how how do you preach that in your program? The the way I preach it is there's two things that you have to do. Two things only. You got to get started, and you got to set a goal that's that you want and not something you think you can achieve because you can achieve way more than you realize. So you got to get started. You got to make that decision. That's the first domino. And once you get started, you just got to keep going. That's it. It's a one day at a time proposition. Read this index card first thing in the morning, which I've done 990 days in a row. When I go home tonight, before I go to bed, I will read this index card again. And Every day I have an image of me at my ideal weight. I'm operating at 205 pounds in my mind, my spirit, in every possible way, the way I eat, the way I walk. I walk on weekends. You see me every yeah. day. I walk nine and a half miles. I'm 64 years old. I'm not bragging. For me, it's a piece of cake now. When I first started, I walked a half a mile. I thought I was going to die. My ankle swelled up. My knees hurt. I was out of breath. Um, I just said, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing the right thing. I'm going to keep moving forward 1% better. After I lost 50 pounds, I said, this is going to work. So I reached out to people who had difficulty, who had the weight loss, weight gain roller coaster, who were on diets, doing the outside in, uh, you know, solution, which doesn't work. All success is an inside job. You got to get that image. You got to work from the inside out. So I brought two groups through the program, everyone lost weight. Right. I now ha have two groups going through this year. Everyone is having great success. So I have testimonials now, and when I launch this thing in the book, I'm going to bring this globally. And what happens when you do hit your target goal, like 205? Is it like, it's not end game, you know, right? No, no it's uh, the goal has got to be to reach and maintain. What I tell people is the good news, bad news is there's no finish line. We all want that Rocky Balboa moment right, where we reach the mountaintop the top, and I am going to reach the mountaintop and I'm going to broadcast when I get to 205, I'm going to broadcast it live on, on Facebook. Well, you're welcome to come back and, and, and we'll, maybe we'll do it yeah. here yeah. and we're going to just let everyone, all of the, I've been posting on Facebook every day for two years, just as a, an accountability. Yeah. Anything I can do to stay engaged with the goal, but when that's over, then what? Right. You know, you have your little moment. That's what I'm the saying. World stops What's spinning. next? What's next is now there's the 
the bigger amount. You might get know? to a point where you're like, fuck, I got to start eating. I'm too thin. <laughs> <laughs> like, honey, honey so order, order some fucking pizza. <laughs> A lot of people have said that already, and I, I still get a little, a little gut, but I'm, I'm happy. If I, if I plateaued right here, I'm at 226. Um, I have 21 pounds to go. I want to get there by May 3rd of this year. I will. Um, if I don't, I'll just keep going. You know, that's what I tell people. When you get to the, the due date here, and you haven't reached there, one thing you got to do: keep going. Extend. Would you say so? Would you say? I mean, so much of it is mental. 100. percent Yeah. 100%. Creating that mindset. Yeah. What what the diet companies want you to do is don't think and grow thin. They want you to let them do the thinking for you. Give us your money. Eat the food. You'll lose the weight. That's take a, the take a shot once a week and That's then it. the weight falls off. That's it. Or we'll deliver to your door or Maria Osmond will give you the smile on her face. Uh, you got to do things. You know, it's a whole lifestyle change. It's not just diet. It's not exercise. It's a combination of all kinds of things that involves. I, it's a holistic approach that involves thought. It involves affirmations. It involves prayer. It involves eating right. It involves mastermind groups. You know, getting people that you can be accountable with. It's a, it's a whole program that I put together, and, and it's very well spelled out in the book. I think the book's going to do really well just because I think there's great value there for people like myself. Uh, who, there's, there's millions of people who are in the same boat who tried this and tried that and had reached the end of that rope. And we have an obese society. Now, let's face yeah. it. No, we have I, a lot of So you, you've had a couple of groups follow this program, right? <laughs> have you had at this a, table. someone that um, you, you've seen like <laughs> that was pulling, pulling back and, and, and what's your approach to try to like reinforce that, you know, all they I need do, to stick to the plan. I, sometimes I go with tough love with those people because um, what I tell people is language is declarative in nature. What you say, you're declaring to be true in your life. So when I hear people say, you know, I had, in fact, uh, I'll give you the example. A guy calls me and he says, I've been doing the affirmations, which is just statements of positive, you know, that you want to take root. And uh, I, I want to talk to you about this positive uh, thinking stuff. You know, can, can we have a private conversation? I'm thinking. Positive thinking stuff. Okay. And I can see where this is going. I said, sure. Yeah. We can have a positive thinking conversation. So we got on a Zoom call and I said, what's up? And he says, you know, I'm doing that positive thinking, the affirmations. Uh, every thought I have is positive and I, and I can't, I'm not getting good results. And I said to him, that wasn't a positive thought. But not getting good results. Eh? And he said, oh, yeah. I said, understand this expectation is thought if your expectation is no matter what i do no matter how many positive things i do i'm not going to get results guess what you're you're, you're creating that negative reality. yeah, yeah. you 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 are your expectation is what's driving the lack of result i said for, forget about saying that stuff start saying i'm getting great results everything i do works the universe is behind me is complicit with my goal, I am moving forward at the right pace. I'm arriving at the mountaintop in the perfect time, in the perfect way. You know, and he said, okay, and he got off the call. He's down to one, he was at 280, he's at 191. Wow, he's he's a, a, a pound away from his goal. Wow. And a lot of it was his mental attitude. He realized in that one conversation, you're right, expectation is thought. I never thought of it that way. We become what we think about, and I've been expecting to fail even with this program and that kind of shifted him around. Well, Freddie, throughout your journey, right? Did you, did you reach any point month or week where you weren't losing weight and you had to do something different to reignite the weight loss? Several times. And one of the premises that I coach is I want you to get 1% better every day, 1% better. And when you plateau, if you're doing the same thing and you're getting the same result, you got to change game. it up. You got to either, walk a little longer or maybe change your diet a little bit or start doing affirmation, whatever it happens to be. I plateaued recently and I was plateaued for a good, maybe three weeks. I started looking into, I actually did a visualization. I do visualization sometimes and I just get into a very quiet meditative state and I just put out to the universe, I'm plateauing. I need an idea. I just sit there and I wait. And, uh, honestly, I got the idea intermittent fasting is a big thing now. So I'm like, all right, let me look into intermittent fasting. That's where you have a, a window 
Mm-hmm. So you'd, it's called time restricted eating and uh, looked into it and there was a healthy way. So I'm, I went on a six at 18, six intermittent fast where I eat for a six hour window from 7:30 AM to 1:30 PM. And then I don't eat mm-hmm. for 18 hours and I had a, no problem with it. And boom, I lost 4.8 pounds one week. I lost 5.6 pounds. I was right back. So yeah, I've done that a number of times. And when you're committing long term, you have to understand it's not one thing or two things. It's it's a process yeah. that you have to be completely engaged in. And you have to understand that if you are discouraging, if you if you're allowing yourself to be discouraged, that's on you. Yeah. You know, stop telling the story. Stop saying I'm discouraged. Say I'm encouraged. I'm doing what I have to do. Boom. Any, oh, I'm sorry. No, good. Okay. Any idea how I could lose 65 in three weeks? Uh, yeah, you cut off both your legs. <laughs> I got a vacation. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, like, that, that kind of rolls into, like, well, I have a question, you know, here, like, um, you know, like, so what were some of the challenges or setbacks that in hindsight played a crucial role in your personal development? So like, would that be one of them? Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like you plateau. Yeah. You know, plateauing. So I think one of the, 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 the one person you have to defeat in this is the one looking back at the mirror. Your ego is going to uh, encourage you to quit every single day. And that has happened. Yeah, the rationalization in your brain. It's, well, it's what do you have leading up to this? I had 25 years of failed attempts. So my ego, my, my learned self, my conditioned self was like, why are you even bothering? I actually picked up a book when I first started. The first day, someone said, Bright Line Eating. This is the book. I lost 45 pounds. A great book. Oh, great. Page three of the book. I was going to go on the Bright Lines diet. Page three of the book said, of the people trying to get obese, uh, 99% will fail, literally. 99. 99. 99. There's a 99% failure rate. And that is true. If you read, do research, 99% of people who are overweight or obese trying to get thin will fail. I closed Jesus the book. Christ. I put the book down and I, honest to God, I closed my eyes. I imagined myself across from God and I said, I am a one percenter, but I don't know what to do. I'm confused. I'm confused with nutrition. I'm ref- confused what to do. I'm praying for divine guidance. And I, I swear to you, that prayer has been answered 150 different ways and continues to be answered. You have to make a commitment and you have to know that commitment is 100%. There's no such thing as partly committed. You're either committed or you're not committed. I made a commitment that day. I've had a lot of bad days. I tell people also, uh, you know, when you walk, they said, how do you do the walk? And I, you, you know, how did you develop a love for walking? I said, I didn't. I, I don't want to go out any single day. I, I want to resist that walk every single day. Right. I see you in the rain. Me too. I see you in the I snow. I see you around. I see you in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Melting it's, away. Windy, freezing out. I see you. Going. Yeah. I'm going. And I don't feel like going every single day. I don't but, even think you wear rain gear in the rain, do you? I do. Oh. I, I wore this. My daughter bought this for me, so I, I told her I would, I would wear it. But there's a, a guy who wrote a, a little white paper in 1940. Albert Ian Gray. It's called the the common denominator of success. And basically what he's saying is the common denominator of success is successful people are willing to turn into habits, those things that unsuccessful people don't feel like doing. And what he didn't write there is successful people don't like doing them either. I don't feel like going for a walk in the morning. I'd rather be laying in bed with my wife. Yeah. But I get up at four o'clock, I do my thing, my prayers and my visualization. I do a little writing. I put my gear on and out I go. And it, how how early are you? So you're walking that early? I'm walking at uh, quarter to six. Okay. I walk on the weekend, weekdays, I walk from quarter to six. I walk for a little over an hour and a half. So I walk 5.2 miles on week weekdays, Monday okay. through Friday. Then on Saturday and Sunday, I walk nine and a half miles. See, all right. I'm sorry. That's right. And I walked 359 days in 2023. Wow. God yeah, bless. Every, every day out except for that. I walked like 45 days and I thought I fucking crushed. <laughs> you did. Yeah, you did though, Joe. You, you did. did. No, I'm being serious. Don't, don't, don't sell yourself short. That's, no, that's, yeah. You know, I walked you, today three miles. You're getting yeah, at it. That's yeah. good. That, so, like, that's what I want to ask. Like, like, how do you structure your day to maintain a healthy work life balance? Like, do you have a morning routine? Yeah. Yeah. You know I, I mean? do a morning routine. I, I do, uh, I wake up between four and four 30. I spend time in, in, in prayer for about 20 minutes to a half hour. I visualize every single day. And what I do when I visualize is I insert myself in a picture 
that I want to live into. So with the, I told you about the extender belt when I went on that plane, I did that visualization 50 times where I would walk onto the, the ramp, get onto the plane, hear all the clicking and the, the stale air the, the, and hear all that sounds, get onto the seat and put that thing on. I visualized that 50 times. And when it actually happened in my physical universe, I was like, I almost cried. I almost did. Uh, now I visualize getting to the mountaintop, doing my way in live on Facebook. I've done that 150 times. When I actually do that, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to lose it. I also do, um, you know, all kinds of other visual. So every single day I visualize uh, something that I want to live into. And uh, then I do some kind of writing usually. Um, and then about quarter to six, I get bundled up and out the door I go. That's my morning ritual. I do more before the sun rises than I used to do in a whole day, literally. Yeah. And now I, you know, I go to work, I have business, I have a lot of things going on. Uh, by the end of the day, I'm pretty shot, but uh, I, you know, then I read this before I go to bed. Were you uh, always a spiritual spiritual person, or yeah, just I was. kind of okay? I was always spiritual. Uh, I, I should say, for I was religious for a long period of time, and now I'm spiritual. I don't um, so much as uh, follow religion closely, as I I I understand the God within me. And, and I, I, that's what I'm trying to be. I'm trying to allow God greater access to my life, my mind, my work, my creativity. And, uh, you know, I, I do believe in prayer, but I believe prayer is sitting there quietly and allowing God to talk to you. Too. It's not petitioning God for, God, I need this, God, I need that. So I'm much more spiritual now uh, than I was 15, 20 years ago. Okay. And uh, Think and Grow Thin right is not your first uh self motivational uh book or right it's my first uh, book of that nature i had a um a uh a daily uh email that i send out called our daily fred and i did mm. that for 15 years it was it came out monday through friday six o'clock in the morning it would be an excerpt from one of the books i've studied and then my thoughts on it, which I called my Fredatorial. There you go. And people, I have uh, that's I have awesome. <laughs> twelve hundred subscribers from nine different countries. And and the stories I tell about the two stories I tell about that, uh, the troops in Iraq. There was a troop in Iraq that would read our daily Fred every morning before they started their war. You know, this is how far back it goes. And there was another guy that got it in Australia, and he sent me a note saying, "Fred, I just want you to know." Um, I have a friend who's going through a real rough time and I share your fredatorials with him all the time, hoping to pick him up. I'm forwarding an email that he sent to me and the email basically said, Mike, I was going to commit suicide today before I got this oh, yeah. daily Fred. And I read this Get thing. Get the fuck out of you. I swear to God. And I, I got a chill and I, I, I cried and I, I did that for 15 years. I just stopped this year because I'm writing the book. I'm going to start Daily Fred back up again because I have people call me saying, hey, you know, where's the Daily Fred? I'm like, hey, I did it for 15 years, five days a week. I wrote three 3,500 newsletters. I'm taking a little hiatus to write a book. I'll get back to it. Yeah. Obviously having an impact. Though. Fred, do you happen yeah. to record live sporting events still? <laughs> TiVo <laughs> Asian records everything uh, on his VCR oh, oh, oh. I these guys break my chops I record things all right if I'm out like listen all right if I'm out and I'm gonna miss the game I record the game yeah you know what I mean I don't and know I go, how to do it I go home and I watch it I don't know why why is it such an issue. Sorry. But, I, just, I just want to see if anybody else is doing okay. it. That's all. All right, Freddie. Uh, were there any influential people or mentors who guided you during the early stages? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bob Proctor. Um, you ever see The Secret? The movie The Secret? No. Okay, the movie The Secret, which has been seen by 100 million people. It's this huge thing. Uh, it's basically about the, power, the law of attraction, okay? And uh, someone came to our house, my, one of my wife's relatives and gave us said you got to watch this i thought of you when i read watched this movie i'm like oh, okay so i watched it and i saw bob proctor among others uh for the first time i'd never seen this guy before the following day i'm looking for motivational quotes and i see bob proctor's looking for motivational speakers i'm like what i never heard of this guy before i see him on the secret now he's looking for 
Well, make a long story short, I went down and trained to become one of Bob Proctor's motivational speakers. And while we were down there, we were allowed a week of training. There was one hour where three or four uh, training consultants at a time went into a private office. and We got a chance to speak to Bob Proctor. And uh, he says, you have answers, I have questions. Who has, an an who has a question? And I said, I got a question. I said, Fred, what's your question? I said, how do I become a superstar in motivational speaking in this business? And without hesitating, he said, the first thing you have to do is become a superstar here. If you know what a superstar looks like, you will be a superstar. And that was 2008. And when I was putting together this, I'm thinking, what else do I have to do? And I went, I got to get an image. And I got the image of me as a senior in college. And I got a picture of that, put it on my computer. And I look at that picture every single day as if I'm looking in the mirror. I got the image that I'm now living into. So he was definitely a big mentor of mine uh, and all the people I trained with at Life Success. And I, he's dead now, Bob Proctor, but I've gone back to that material time and time again. And I study it like nobody's business. And now I'm coaching it. And uh, that helps me to see people and I'm, I'm coaching getting a result. It's, it, that's what lifts me up. That's why I do the business. Mm -hmm. nice. So just so everyone knows, I've, I've taken the same approach that Fred has. Uh, back in 2012, I started my journey to weight loss. In 2010, I bought a Jeep. And as a lot of people know, when you buy a Jeep, you go somewhere into the mountains and you hike for a little bit to do some sightseeing. I was, I was just over 300 pounds at the time. We came back from a walk and I was just winded. I almost didn't make it back to the Jeep. I was like, you know, my chest was hurting, just couldn't do it. Um, so a friend of mine was getting married uh, the next year. And um, I put out a challenge to him. I said, let, let, I know you want to lose weight for, for the wedding. Let's, let's go on, let's do a challenge. You know, we called it the biggest loser at the time. You know, there was that TV show. So we did, kind of did the same thing. And I took the same mindset. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him, and then I'm going to beat these other guys that are in this contest. I'm going to win this thing. We had a hundred bucks on the line, and it wasn't it wasn't about the money for me. Right. It was just I'm going right. to beat them. That's my goal because I don't want to lose. I hate losing. Nation. Yeah. So um, I beat them. I, I won the contest, and I told myself I needed to keep going because I didn't reach my goal yet. So the following year, uh, I found out about the rock and roll marathon and, uh, there was a 5k, 10k and a full marathon that you can run. And I said, I'm going to run the 10k. I said, yeah, I could probably do the 5k easily. I'm going to challenge myself with the 10k. So for a good nine months, every single day, I would run three to five miles. And then once a month, I would run a full 10k. How and many miles I just did that. that Six. Um, two. I, I, I can't remember exactly, That's but six, it's, two, right? okay. yeah, it's around six miles. Yeah. And, um, I finally ran that 10 K and that, and that was my goal. And, awesome. I, and, I, and I ran it. Gabe, can, I mean, I mean, do you feel comfortable? Do you want to share with everybody how much weight you've lost since your heaviest? Um, I was the heaviest I ever was at the time was just about three Oh nine. I started the weight loss journey around two ninety eight. Um, I got back down to 215 from uh, the 298. I've gained some back um, during COVID. I'm using that as, as an excuse just because we didn't go anywhere. But, I mean, it's still my fault. Um, but I'm still losing weight again. Uh, the hardest part for me right now is not really to lose weight but to gain muscle. Uh, it's, it's been harder for me to gain muscle just because um, I've had some injuries. I've had a back injury in the past. so pulling a lot of muscle, pulling a lot of weight. Um, it, it's, it's a little difficult, but, um, you know, little by little I'm setting goals and trying to exceed those goals. Good for you, buddy. Keep it up. Awesome. Seriously. That's, that's impressive. That you should be proud. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, with that. So as of today, okay. Being like where, where you are physically. All right. I have like, has your hobbies or your bucket list? Has that changed at all? Because, you know, like for example, you got on that ride. Yep. You know what I mean? That you couldn't, you couldn't do that before. Are, are there other things like that? The only thing, well, it's a big thing. I want to get on stages worldwide. 
I want to get in front of thousands of people all Changing the time lives. and just help people to understand they can do this. It's not too late. If you're 60 or 50 or whatever your age, and if you've tried a million times and failed at everything, guess what? So did I. I want to get in front of as many people as possible. The publisher that's going to publish my book, they called bestseller publishing. They guarantee international bestselling status, and they put you on four major stages worldwide as part of the package. I can't wait. Bring it on, man. I, I that's so. I don't think I would have ever aspired to do that, even though I can do public speaking, because I didn't. I wasn't happy with how I looked, but now I'm happy with how I look. When I put a shirt and a tie and a suit on, I'm fit. I look good. Mm -hmm. I, I I'm credible. And behind me, you're going to see those before and after pictures that you showed here. Mm -hmm. This is not photoshopped. Yeah, I was that fast. Well, I mean, like, I, you know, you me. know, I've known you for 25 years. You know right. what I mean? I've witnessed it. You, yeah, you, know? you should just walk on these stages, fucking naked. Oh, well, fuck it. <laughs> Strap. Boom. The human tripod. <laughs> there you go. I, no, I mean, Freddie. I mean, I'm telling you, man. It, it is seriously. I, I can't even. Un I don't know of a bigger word, like, you know, like than impressive, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It, it, it really, really is. Like I said, knowing you for so long and, um, to seeing where you come in, why, but like watching you, I mean, I've, I've, I feel like I've watched this transformation. I've had right. a front row seat. You walk past my house every single every day. day. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. how many times, you know, we stopped and talk and I don't even want something, you know, I know you got your headphones on sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just a wave because yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to stop your flow, man. I don't want to interrupt you, but then, you know, I'll run into you at the restaurant. I'll run to you here and there and stuff. And it, it's just, you know, you came to my house in 4th of July, you right. know, it, it's, it's just impressive. Yeah. That, that's well, what. you know, thank you. I appreciate that. And the thing is, like I said, there's no finish line. So when I get to 205, then what? If I put the weight all back on, which most people do, 99 percenters, um, what's the use? I went through three and a half years to, to put the weight back on. So it's an ongoing thing. You know, it's uh, that's probably the most challenging thing is to keep going one day at a time. I'll set another goal that won't might not be physical. That'll keep me engaged. But in terms of my physical health, um, this is the way I'm doing it, man. What are you listening to? And you have a go to shoe. I don't have a go to shoe. Um, what I'm listening to, I have a uh, I have a playlist of 300 or so songs. So you're listening uh, to music. Nothing. I'm listening to music, okay. but for the first uh, two hours of my walk, I express gratitude. Now people say, gratitude, yeah, it's, gratitude's big. Well, how can you express gratitude for two hours? I'm like, think of anything in your life that you're grateful for. For example, my wife. So I say, thank you, I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for humble spirit. I'm grateful for her, uh, the love. I'm grateful for our friendship. I'm grateful for the fact that she has the same faith as I. I'm grateful that she keeps our home. I'm grateful for our sex life. I'm grateful for, I go on for five minutes for just my wife. Then I move on to my parents who are both dead. I'm grateful for the lessons I learned from them. I'm grateful for their marriage and for the way they showed me how to love. I'm grateful for the, their integrity. I'm grateful for their sobriety. I'm grateful, you know. I will, I'll break down my life. And after two hours, I still have a ton of things to be thankful for that I'm just, but it's time to listen to my music. Yeah. So uh, I do listen to music, but I spend the first two hour, hour and a half when I do my, during the week, I don't even listen to music because my whole walk is gratitude. Yep. Uh, and that sets my day, you know, after spending some time in prayer in the morning and then doing visualization and then walking. You know, I'm walking on air when I walk into the office. I mean, I'm I'm ready. I've set the tone for the day. I still have lousy days. You know, I still have days where I'm, I can't get out of my own way, where everything's going wrong. Uh, but I don't get angry about it. I'm just, I know that's the flow of the universe. Some days shit just, just happens. Uh, you can know? you just uh, make sure you add uh, Beers and BS, the podcast, <laughs> to uh, that Your playlist? playlist. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Available on iHeartRadio and um, Spotify. Yes. Oh, yeah. I have a question. So, listen. Like you said before, your daughter said she was never embarrassed by you. And, you know. So she says. No, it's true. Yeah. Like, and, and this part of my, my, my thing, like, our families always accept us no matter what. Yeah. Right. And, and, right. And they never tell us, like, but you, you're getting out of control with this or that, you know, whatever, if it's weight loss or smoking or whatever, whatever it is, you know. Um, how, how did you get over that barrier where everybody in your life accepts, accepts you for who you are and, you know, and, and, you know, it doesn't matter to them, you know, but it's, um, I guess 
I, I accepted myself as being fat. And that's, I think, what set the tone for everything else. I was a happy-go-lucky guy. Oh. I wasn't miserable. I wasn't always complaining about how heavy I was. I was eating and never, drinking. Never, not once. Freddie. Never. As long as I've known you, you've been the life of the party. Yeah. As long as I've known I you. Got a, you have a joke every time I see you. Yeah. Okay. I have that video. I still have that video of you uh, doing the Mick Jagger <laughs> well, now down, doing, down at the Yacht Club. I'm, I'm gonna, when I get to 205... I'm going to do a, uh, I have a lot of people on Facebook who are, I have accountability. I, every day I post something. I, I bring, I have shout outs for people. I, I tell people what's going on. I bring off the date on my weight or whatever. It's something different every day. I'm going to do a move like Jagger Palooza party at the there Angels where I'm going to get up and do a set with Jules Band. Yeah. I'm going to be at 205 with my Mick Jagger clothes on, you know, <laughs> doing the whole bit. And, uh, I, I visualize that and just the feeling of gratitude of having inviting all these people to one big party. And, you know, it's funny. You mentioned uh, that people accept me for, what well, you know, don't say anything about my weight. No one ever. None of my friends, not you, not my family. That won't, no one said, Fred, you know, no, because you're getting you, a little heavy. Yeah, right. But you know what? Several people have said, you know, you're getting too skinny too thin yes they now, say that why to you is that yeah, yeah they, they say that to you you get too skinny that to you but that's interesting you too fat. It, it, yeah, yeah. that was interesting and i don't know what the reason is right no it's true i never said that to you no no I, no I, no but people I know, do because i know you're on a mission man yeah. you know what i mean so i would never get in the way of that yeah no but i mean i think part of that i think is people's uh hang up with themselves if they're a little too heavy you know and they see you getting thin and like hey, you know geez you're looking yeah, look a little thin there, you know. Yeah. I never fucking got haters. Upset. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Freddie's skinnier than me now, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have an idea. Oh, yeah, Freddy, I have pump, an idea. Pump the brakes, buddy. Pump yeah. the brakes. You have an idea? Yeah, I have an that. idea. Oh, oh okay. Gabe. Okay. Sorry, Gabe. <laughs> yeah. All right. How about this? Around the room, we? <laughs> we have, we have a, a God right there. We have a beers and BS weight loss challenge. We bring back Freddie. Um, let's say November first, and right. we talk about our, our weight loss journey. Oh wow! I'm in. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm fucking in. Let's go. And I will send you let's, guys. Let's face it. We can all. We can all send you a little pounds. "Think and Grow Thin" excerpt for you to. Yeah, actually, I, I have to get in shape. I got I got some young bucks at work that I gotta take care of. <laughs> yeah, these fucking guys challenged me. I lost my first arm wrestling challenge. You getting pushed around at work, Mike? Nah, I, you know what? You know, <laughs> I, I'm I'm a little intimidated to get the rematch until I get back into some really good shape. You know, so maybe we should do this. I'm going to kick some ass and take some names on tour. Um, <laughs> guys, I got one more question for Freddie. Do you guys have anything? Uh, no. No? No? Freddie? I have, I'm saying I have one more question. I'm saying, but I didn't want to. Oh, go ahead. Shoot. Yeah. All right. So what is the biggest. Well, hold on. I'm just joking. Go ahead. What is the biggest, <laughs> well, uh, most important life lesson you've learned that you like to pass on to others? From thinking and grow thin? Yes. Um. The number one life lesson is if it's to me, if, if it's to be, it's up to me. You got to take ownership of your result. Mm. You can't be putting it on other people. You can't be expecting the diet or the gym to, if it's to be, it's up to me. Take ownership of your result right now. Make the decision and then just keep going. That's, that was a life lesson that I, I learned a long time ago with business and other things, you know, the, writing a book. Took me nine years to write my first novel. I just kept going. I didn't believe I one bad draft after another after another. And finally I had a really good book and boom, it got published. Uh I never did it with a health goal. And, you know, I basically took that that tact. If if it's to be, it's up to me. I gotta take ownership of my result. I don't care that fifty pounds was the most I ever lost. I'm gonna lose 145 now. I don't know how. I just know that today I'm gonna to do that. I'm gonna live that way. And I've been doing that for, for over three years now. And that's the life lesson, I, the takeaway that I had from, from this particular journey. Your plan even even past 205 is to continually, continually like get positively better. impact the lives of others. Absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna get out there and at, at the age of 65, when a lot of people are getting to retire, I'm just getting started as uh uh, Al Pacino said in in, in the, that movie where he's a blind guy. Sensible one. No, yeah. Sit down. You're, you're done. Oh, no, I'm just getting warmed up. Nice. Uh, that's going to be me, you know, doing the speaking and stuff, you know, for, for, for the rest of my life. You know, I'm retiring from my, my full-time job in November, and I'm just going to hit the ground running. 
Awesome. Uh, uh, you're an inspiration. Seriously. Thank you. I mean, Appreciate I struggle that. with my weight a little bit and, uh, you know, your story is very inspiring. Seriously. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I was just going to say that Joe, um, I, I would say you got, you just inspired three people right now. You know what I mean? And Let's do it, baby. It, it, it's been, like I said, I've been watching you for years and you know, we've been talking about it. And, um, that's why, you know, I wanted to have you on, man. Like, you know, we, I, you know, I talk to these guys and I'm like, you know, we got to get Freddie on yeah. because I, you got a story. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That's the thing. I, I, you know, it wasn't what I planned to do, but I now realize that I have become the perfect spokesperson for Think and Grow Thin. That wasn't in part of the plan, but now I realize, hey, look, I got a story to tell. And it's not something I'm boasting about or bragging about. It's something, hey, guys, world, people, you can do this too. I was, I, I have tried and failed for 30 years. I was an athlete in college and I was over 300 pounds for 20 years. I was a, an abject failure when it came to my physical health. And now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on fire for this. I'm, and, and that's what I want to do with, uh, with, with the story. I want to put that story in front of people and give them what's your version of the story. In fact, my, my book opens with people writing their own story and writing their own ending to their story. It's not about diet. It's not about exercise. It's about the journey. It's about putting yourself on a, on a new path and believing that you're going to do it, writing out the index card and then getting, getting busy and then just keep going. I can't wait, right? Can't yeah. wait. Can't wait till two oh five. I yeah, really, I really can't wait because I know we'll hear you. You'll be on the roof. Shouting. I hope you guys are going to come to the party. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's going to be uh, on top of everything. A painter's open bar. Yeah, yeah we'll open bar and, and uh, free. Say up. no more. Can we order, <laughs> free Can we order nachos? <laughs> absolutely. Right. There'll be nachos. There'll be wings. There'll be all, all the stuff I don't eat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Freddie. Um. All right. You gonna like stick around with us for a little yeah. bit, right? We have, you know, just a couple of other topics that we yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, on our yeah, on our show go. and stuff. Right, yeah. You know, this is fun. But, Thank you. Guys. Yeah, but that that was. Uh, have uh, you ever been on any other podcasts? I've been on a bunch of not live. Okay, but I've been on about a dozen podcasts for uh, whole food, plant based, or for you know uh, weight loss. I went on with a woman who wrote a, a great book about plant food. Uh, plant-based whole food eating she's big now this woman uh when you use that term what, what are you exactly talking about because like to me to me it's like uh the, like i was saying like those plant-based burgers and yeah, stuff no. like that plant-based whole food whole food is just food in its natural form that's not been so a, a chicken breast is whole food right an egg is whole food okay that, that's not been processed right, right. whole food plant-based is um vegetables fruit whole grains like uh, brown rice or oatmeal or quinoa and legumes, which is anything that grows in a pot. Um, that grows in a what? I'm sorry. A pod. Lentils, oh, wow. black beans, corn, oh, yeah. peas. That's all I eat. And I eat it in all kinds. Of, we have all kinds of recipes that are delicious. If people said I couldn't eat that way. Spend a week with me and I'll show you how to do it. I, it's, but so you can't go I mean. out to like restaurants. And I can. Yeah. You know, and I eat I, 98% of the time I eat that way. If I go to painters, they have Salad dishes. What do you okay. do when they, they have put the fucking bread in front of you? <laughs> I don't eat it. Oh, I don't eat it. I have developed some really good discipline, which I never thought I would say, but it, it's true. I do. I think what Mike really wants to know is um, Burger King has the Impossible Whopper. It's meatless. It's a meatless burger. And is that okay? It's processed. Is that okay from the eat? It's okay to eat. Well, Anything's okay to eat. No, what I was getting at is uh, to me, a lot of that stuff is, you know, they call it plant based, but how many chemicals got to go into it to make terrible. it taste like a fucking whopper? You know what I mean? It's terrible. It's, it's processed food. You, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it, yes. it, it, yeah, could it be healthy for you? No, it, you know what I mean? Really. You eating a piece of chicken that, that's really corn that, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. True. It's, it's all processed. So stay away from processed food. People will ask me all the time, uh, is it okay to eat blum? And the answer to that question every single time is compared to what? Like yeah. they'll say, you know, is it okay to eat eggs? Compared to the manufactured sausage that's on the plate next to it, yeah, eggs are a good choice. Compared to a bowl of berries, not even close. You know, learn the food, learn the food profile of the foods you're eating, and then you can make an informed decision every day. And that's really where, where I kind of okay. I'm at. Information is uh, power. Nutrition IQ. Always, right? Knowledge is power. Always yeah. power. And, and do you find, honestly, uh, eating like that, is it more expensive than uh, like a – Less a, expensive. Right, less expensive. We, we order from Whole Foods – couple times you know a month and we get all this if you look at my pantry and my refrigerator and my freezer it's all healthy whole food plant-based it's this we got no processed crap 
We get no ice cream. We get no animal products, no eggs. I mean, eggs are okay. You know, I eat uh, once in a while, I'll have an omelet or an egg. I'll have some chicken once in a while. 98% of the time I'm eating this food and I love it. And that's what I crave. That was nuts? The question. You, you I love eat them? nuts. Yeah, I eat walnuts and almonds primarily. Oh, love them both. I, and that, they're the healthiest nuts you can eat. I eat seeds every day. I eat flaxseed every single day. In Flax like a in like a shake or just no, by the hand? My oatmeal. So oh, okay. my, my my breakfast every morning is oatmeal with flaxseed, um, nuts, oat milk, and uh, berries or some kind of fruit. Sometimes I'll have mango fruit. Sometimes I'll have berries. Sometimes I'll have a side of. Uh, grapefruit but i'll have fruit i'll have uh oatmeal you eat after the walk or before after yeah and, and and it's um it's a portion that's made for someone on a diet right? no it's not i have uh, i have a double portion of oatmeal okay. but it's only 390 calories it's got all kinds of fiber in it it's delicious i don't eat any egg sandwiches anymore i don't eat bagels or white bread i've taken white flour out of my diet uh, there's a lot of different things with the diet that has have evolved and changed. And a lot of that is raising your nutrition IQ. Just look in the, this nutritionfacts.org. I go on every day and say, okay, let me look at, uh, you know, uh, chicken wings. How bad are they? They're bad. I don't eat them anymore. <laughs> and I don't eat any deep fried food uh, because of the trans fats. What's a trans fat? I know all that stuff now. And I encourage people, if you really want to take ownership of your result, and you really want to take control of your health, find out what it is you're putting in your body, and then you can make a decision. Is it a more expensive way to eat? No, it's less expensive because okay. we have all these ingredients that are, that are you know, fairly, very affordable, way more affordable than chicken and, and yeah. beef and all those foods that's gone sky high. It's sugar. You know, we, we have a really good budget. We plan the meal, all of our meals on Sunday night. So I have a whole week. Any pastas in there? I do uh, chickpea pasta. Uh, I don't use white pasta anymore. I do chickpea pasta, and it's delicious. And it's, it's the, look at the nutrition profile side by side. Whole different ball game. Just check. I thought maybe see if Joey was gonna fucking faint. <laughs> <laughs> His face got red, boy. Well, so he's like, "What do you mean line, no pasta?" He's crossing the line with chickpea pasta. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, listen, you can, you can take a lot of things away from me, but you're not taking away pizza or hey, pasta. No, that's right? good. That's good. That's fine. <laughs> hey, everyone's different. So, I, and I tell people, everyone in my program has a different uh, eating plan, but they're basically adhering to what I'm talking about. Will we see some kind of uh, some form of? Um, what you eat in the book? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I'm also telling in the book that everyone's different. Your tastes are different. You have your life to live. I have mine. Uh, I'm not telling you what to eat. I'm, I'm just learning this. Uh, three years into it, I'm just learning. But I do know that, you know, if you're going to eat a lot of processed food, you're not going to be healthy. If you eat a lot of saturated fat, you're not going to be healthy. Uh, keep <clears throat> it real. Real food. Keep it simple. Uh, and clean your environment, clean your house. If it's in your house, it's in your mouth. That's the, the, the rule of thumb. And the, the other, the, the whole motto is I used to live to eat and now I eat to live. Mm. That's the bottom line. Have you ever spoke to uh, someone who lives down the street for an hour on the phone? No. No. Oh. No. Who's that, you? <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be me again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adrian. Uh, well, you know, uh, apparently there's some underlying uh, feelings you have. Yeah. No, I just think You're it, sure? it's funny. Yeah. Um, it's, do, you, do you talk to Peter on the phone at all? No. <laughs> no? Yeah. Yes. He keeps it real. He I, called, I called Adrian this week because I knew he wouldn't want to text me, so I called him <laughs> oh, instead. Wow. <laughs> how, right. how long did he keep you on the line there? And I think we talked for like a good Listen, 20 minutes. I saw, he tried getting on the phone a couple of times and I'm like, hey, so what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, dra I dragged it out a little bit longer. Um, so once again, you guys probably, you know, to the audience, you probably heard me say this on this pod at least 20 times. This is episode 20. I guess it's me. <laughs> I guess Congratulations, it's me. guys. Yeah. That, should episodes a, on podcasts. that should be That's a new segment, I guess. Great. I guess it's me. <laughs> that seems every segment, it seems like I guess it's me. Uh, what am I, what are you going to do? All right. All right, Freddie. Um, you know, so speaking of that, right, you're talking about weight loss, your weight loss journey and stuff. Um, I, I Apparently, I guess we're, we're signing on to, on to this, right? We're going to do a little challenge. We'll talk about this, I guess, yeah. off, you know, well, off, out the off air and uh, 
bring it back up uh, in the future and stuff. All right. So I, I ran into, you know, a situation, you know, when it came to, came to weight. Okay. <laughs> My own weight. Um, I got a wedding to go to this Friday. Okay. So I, I, you know, I've known about it, but you know, I got a suit. It's been sitting in the closet, you know, for, for quite a long time. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'll just wear the suit. You know what I mean? So about, I'll call it 10 days ago, right? About a week and a half ago, <laughs> I should probably try this on. So I was, I thought it fit. I was trying to get back into the suit. I'm like, let me try it on. No good. I, I mean, I can't even say it fit me like when, a wet, wet when's suit. When's the last time you wore the suit? Um, like when I had when I got the suit, a couple like a couple years ago. Okay, you know, um, part of it is you know I put on a little muscle, put on some size, so I, I have a little trouble there. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I'm just gonna I'll be just be the, the pants don't fit either. <laughs> okay, so it just <laughs> it just it doesn't fit. And I was like, I kind of like was like, shit, what am I gonna do? This wedding is like next Friday, meaning this Friday. Mm. And, um, so I start, you know, start scrambling and stuff. And, um, I, uh, I actually ordered a suit. I ordered a suit. Men's uh, warehouse. Uh, no. Um, I tried it on and it, it, you know, it, it fits. I mean, it's a little, you know, I had to get it altered and stuff. And you ordered a suit online. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's wow. That's rolling the dice. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> uh, yeah dude, I kind of, I kind of panicked. Yeah. I'm in like panic mode. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm having it altered and, um, I, I, I gotta say it looks pretty good. Nice. <laughs> it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Uh, you yeah. Know. They, spandex works in crazy ways. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Um, but you know, it is definitely a wake up call. Cause I'm like, you know, I know I have this like nice suit sitting in the closet that just doesn't fit me and mm. I gotta do something about it. I gotta get back into that suit. Yeah. So that might be my, you know, you know, you, you sit there and you look at your image. Yeah. You know what I mean? On the refrigerator, yep. you know, view of 205. It's on my computer. Uh, and you can be, okay, yep. on your computer. That might be mine. You yeah. know what I mean? I probably should put it on the fridge so I don't open it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't open the fridge. Maybe that might stop me from opening the fridge. But uh, we'll see. Um, I used to have, when I first started out, I had a, a sign on my refrigerator that said, you're not hungry, you're bored. Mm. And and that helped. That's oh, fucking, dude, uh, That yeah. is very yeah. accurate yeah. Yep. a lot of the time. That, for me, it was. Um, yeah. That that I've definitely eaten so many times just from being just bored. from just from you know yeah. because it, the, to fill the time, the the show's mm-hmm. over. There's another show coming up, so you go. What can yeah. we get? Leftovers. Whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna heat up a frozen pizza because well, I got nothing else. To- <laughs> I, I've said this before. <laughs> for, for me, with cereal. <laughs> Next cereal. Time, I'm like, I have yeah. a big bowl of cereal. My, but whatever. I'm gonna crush two bowls of cereal during this commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> ah, cinnamon toast crunch. So good. Oh, so good. Uh, anyway, so. That's me. That's that's my fat guy story about the suit. Um, but now, you know, but now I have a suit and I got to be honest with you, you know, I, part of me is kind of hoping, for, you know, hoping for a funeral to come up soon so I can put it, so I can put it on again. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, How about another so, wedding? Maybe? <laughs> so with that being said, I haven't been to a wedding in so long. When was the last time you guys went to a wedding? Oh, man. 2023 at some point. I can't remember. Wow. Last year. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had similar issues. Similar issues. I was able to take a suit and have it taken out. Okay. Mm. And uh, that that worked for me. Um, so before 2023, was it a while? No. No? Wow. I, feel it's been so I, I went now. through like a phase of uh, weddings and our family. A lot of younger cousins and my wife's cousins and stuff got married. It was all grouped together. So we actually had over the last three or four years, probably 10 weddings. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. What about you, Mike? Uh, my last wedding was my nephew Danny and Veronica. I love weddings, by the way. And mm. it was probably I don't know less than a year ago. Okay, ready. The last wedding I was at, I was fat. It was before I started. Oh, you probably wedding. can't wait for a wedding. I'm sorry, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, to just show up and people. When they you know, announced the bride and groom, you're going to be right <laughs> fucking behind that walked in the room. What about like 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 when you're out and you see some guy coughing? You like you you look at your wife like. His days are numbered. <laughs> right? There's a funeral Actually, coming up soon, right? I, I, funny you should say that. I have a, a, a friend of mine, Greg Higgins, had a big giant gut like me. We were talking maybe three or four years before I started my journey. And he said, uh, yeah, I just went to my doctor. And my doctor said, you know, at 50, there's a lot of people with, you know, guts like yours. And at 60, I still see a lot. He said, at 70, not so much. You know why? 
And Greg said, no, why? He says, because they're dead. Lose some weight. <laughs> yeah. He died two weeks ago. Oh, oh man. Greg Hagan. Yeah. Wow. You know, 68 Sorry. years old. Um, it's true. When we get to be 60 or 70, you can't. He still had the man. belly? He had a huge medicine ball, like I did. Yeah. And uh, we talked about it. And I was, you know, I made all the excuses. You know, I'm so busy. And, you know, the gym membership costs so much. I'm just full of shit. You know, was, that's basically what it is. Take ownership of it. Get busy. And, you know, most of the stuff you're going to do, no one's going to notice. My walk in the morning, no one sees me, but I got to do the walk. In the morning. You know, just take ownership and do it. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I, now I feel terrible for making that joke because your friend. No, I mean, you know, how would you know? <laughs> but I mean, I, I wanted to bring that up point because that the doctor was pretty hardcore when he said, you know, there's not a lot of people in their 70s who are overweight who you see. You know why? Because they're dead. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> That's a perfect. <laughs> so, <laughs> in this case, you know, I'll make it real quick. You know, you know, don't worry about it. Like, it, I'm going to. It. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about that. How about you just put your phone down? I know. Okay. Um, <laughs> in this case, I'm going to a wedding where I don't know anybody. Uh, okay, it's it's a friend of my wife's. I know, you know, I know the bride. You know, I met the groom a couple times and I'm so happy for her. She's such a great girl. I'm, I really am. I'm happy for her. She, um, they're, they're both very happy. Congratulations. Um, I know, but other than them and you know, you know how it goes. They're going to be so busy. You're not going to see yeah. them you yeah. know, at the wedding. Other than them, I know one other person and that's it. And Aside that's from it. your wife. Besides my wife, yeah. one other person. And I'm just like, you know, it's been a long time since I've been yeah. you know, in, in a situation like yeah. that. You know, I might say it, I'm not looking for you know. You missed the social ball. You talk to everybody at the table. I, will. Good time. I know I'm going to make fine. friends. I will. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just like, you know, has that has that happened to you guys? You know what I mean? Joey, you went to 10 weddings in three years. So is there a situation where you've been, you know, where you didn't know anybody? Not, No, not recently. But I have been in that situation. Yeah. Um, it sucks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the, these weddings I'm speaking of, most of them are family, so I, it kind of was good. You, you might actually have the best time because, listen, you could just focus on your wife, right? And this yeah. is, cut up a rug, you know, get a, hit the dance floor. Get her drunk. Let, let, let her hang. Let you have nothing to be embarrassed about because you're never going to see any of those people ever again, right? <laughs> Do the fucking worm. Bro. Yeah. Be the life of the party. <laughs> Do the worm? Let it hang. I better stretch a little bit before I <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Well, you, you know what I mean? That's my, that's, that's my thing. Yeah, you'll be fine. Okay, cool. Um, guys, real yeah. quick. Mike's uh, favorite topic, true crime. True crime. Very it quick sells. update. I think I was, I was a little long winded last week, <laughs> um, on the Long Island body parts case. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Are you familiar with Freddy? They, they found the, uh, yeah. the chopped up parts yeah. in Babylon. Babylon. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Spread out over three different parts. Like Babylon. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so real quick, um, they're still out and they're being monitored with ankle bracelet. Okay. The male victim has been identified mm. as Mac Malcolm Craig Brown, 53. And as we said last week, he is related. He's a cousin to one of the suspects. Mm. Okay. And then one of the, uh, one of the other suspects, a female, Amanda Wallace was arrested on Friday, uh, March 15th for stealing beauty products from a CVS and she was released because of what bail reform. Uh, and she's due back in court on March 22nd. Mm. Mm. So okay. she has an ankle bracelet on. She goes to the store and robs the store. Yes. Stole beauty products. Uh, you know what I mean? We're and then, doing some and then she intelligent admitted to people here. When, and when they said, when they said, you know, like, did you steal this stuff? She's like, yeah. And like, why? Well, I realized that I forgot my money and I didn't want to go home and get the money. Wow. That's what she said. So these people, first of all, they, they've been interviewing the people like in the town. You know, a mass people in that area, and they, like these people are outraged. People are like nervous and afraid that these people are, they're out, Walking they're around. able to roam around, even yeah. though they're you know ankle, they're still going to CVS, they're still going to stores and stuff. So, I don't know, man. Pretty crazy. It's uh, just want to, you know, touch base. We said we'd be to be continued, and still yeah. to be continued. Yeah. Wow. Um, but the male victim has been identified, and uh, they're getting arrested for shoplifting. Oh, crazy. Insane. That's it. Insane. Um, that's it. You guys, right? You guys have anything on that? No. No. All right. Um, as we start, uh, Freddie, we always wind down. We start winding down the show. We talk about if we watch anything good lately. No. You know, TV, yeah. movies, anything like that. 
You have you watched anything good lately? I haven't really watched anything good lately. I uh, I'm now watching The Chosen, uh, which is about Jesus. Okay. And yes, we're on yeah, yeah. episode four, and I'm, I'm digging it a, yeah. a lot. But uh, I I mostly read, and if I we'll, we'll binge watch shows, and I haven't really seen a good one. But this one, what's that on The Chosen? It's on the first season's on Netflix, and then it's on some other network has i think it's three seasons okay but i'm really digging it so uh but uh nothing really great you know since since breaking bad mm. as far as oh I'm yeah concerned. that was my favorite <laughs> love breaking bad oh so good that was a great shot michael um so i turned on netflix and they, they were promoting uh code eight part two or whatever you know uh so i went back and watched Code Eight Part One because I never saw that. Is this a shower or a movie? It's a movie, and then uh, I watched Code Eight Part Two. Um, so you know, I like sci-fi. So it, it's like uh, humans with uh, special abilities, and then uh, there's like this fucking weird drug that they get from them, and so on. It's actually it, it, the number one was Code Eight was all right. Code Eight Part Two, it was it was good, but it was kind of just like drawn out a little bit to me. But it, it was good. Um, it's the, with the guy from Upload. Do you ever watch Upload on Amazon? No. Oh, that that's actually a good show too. You never saw that? No, I never did either. I never heard of it. Yeah. I never heard of either Rose. Yeah. So. Oh, they do it. Um, basically, what happens is uh, in Upload, um, he, he passes away. But before he passes away, uh, his his girlfriend has his head chopped off and brain put into the, like the cyberverse, and he lives like in this um digital heaven basically you know it's like this rich person's fucking uh idea of heaven uh, you know, it's, wow. it's pretty wild true story yeah true story yeah <laughs> right, listen you know we get we get a lot of our future from movies and stuff here we go. you know gabe's got it up here right now here we go which one is this upload uh, upload all right yeah upload is good you should okay. definitely check that that's out on, you said that's on amazon yeah upload is on amazon um code eight he, he's a guy from code eight the movie was all right you know it was it was good so they have code eight and code eight part two yeah. joseph what about you um i just finished full swing season two on netflix i told you guys about that last week right awesome i don't know if anybody started huh. it but it really is really heard good. Of that either. it's uh behind the scenes of um professional golfers wow uh really how the tournaments work and how they get from tournament to tournament and just the camaraderie that they have it's really good yeah it's a, i recommend it i'm not I a big like golfer at all that. yeah i am but are you really i like the golf I, and i would i would enjoy that yeah. I, I haven't heard of it yeah there's two seasons i would definitely check that out will do just started the gentleman though on oh yeah I, was is that any good i just been, uh, i yes. just finished that yeah, I'm me two, too, Gabe. I'm, I'm two episodes in and i'm hooked uh, really? it yeah. is so good yeah it is so good i was, I was gonna ask you Gabe, what's what do you got yeah, the gentleman, absolutely. We binge watched that the last two days, and we finished nice. it in two days. Yeah, it looks funny. Is it funny? No, it's no. funny. No, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny? I haven't. Yeah. Really, no, yeah. no, it's funny. So you, you need to like understand. You need, you, no, you need to understand British humor. That's why. Oh. So it's got really, it's really quick witted. Um, it's Guy Ritchie, so a lot of it yeah. is going to be, you know, in your windows. Yeah, I mean, there's funny, there's funny things that happen, but it's, I wouldn't call it a comedy. No, 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 no! It's not a comedy. Oh, yeah. no, definitely not is a comedy. it like like brothers or something like that? And, and this guy inherits. Uh, this is what I've seen. Two brothers it. inherited, or is it no one? Okay. One guy thought he was getting it. Okay, he didn't. Uh, That's kind of uh, who, what I find him funny. Yeah, I yes. find it, yeah. I find him funny. Okay. He's got a quirky personality. Yeah. They inherited what a business? No, uh, uh, like the, they're, they're, they're a duke. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this takes place in England. The gentleman. The gentleman. Um, it, it's good. It's uh. I'm a lord, you know. Are you? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, I own property in Europe, and uh, my title, I'm really a lord. I'm not my, Mr. Michael D'Angelo's. I'm Lord Michael D'Angelo. <laughs> just, to, just to let you know, I'm, I'm, when you when you go to visit my my tombstone later on, you know, it, that's what it will say on. Where do you own property? Ah, uh, listen, England, Scotland, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I got a couple pieces of some castles. There we shit. go. Yeah. <laughs> so who who granted you the title of lord? Ah. Uh, Europe, man, you, you know, for being a property owner uh, you know, on, on the state. Yeah. yeah, I'm just letting you know. Yeah, to be continued. This yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 smoke we're, I weed every day. <laughs> I want to hear about this. Um, yeah, so absolutely, the gentleman, great show. Wow, you know, um, I I finished Check it, it as well. Um, very good. Uh, 
I like Guy Ritchie. I, I mean, uh, like the way he does it. I mean, is it like foreshadowing? How, like, like, you know, like he'll talk about the situation and then he'll show clips of it happening. Okay. Well, like, how, how do you describe that game? Future dreaming. Um, you know what I'm talking about? It, it, it's a, I guess you can call it a preamble. Okay. We'll go with that. All right. Um, so that, and then I was going to say, just to touch on, Gabe brought this up. There's a recommendation he brought up last week, Shogun. One of the best, one of the best shows I've ever watched. Wow. Right? Dude, I, I tried to start watching it. It was the part that you had to read. I, I couldn't find No, no, I, I did what Gabe did. The, uh, the, the, Engl- the yeah, English Yeah, wh- where did you find that? On Hulu. On Hulu? Yeah. Uh, right. Go to the episodes. It's called That's Ch- an old one, isn't it? No, Shogun, it just came out now. <clears throat> oh, okay. It, it's 1600 Japan. Right. It, it's... It's so well done. It it can get like you can see like you know like like it gets like a little slow, you know like you would think like some people might find it boring, but the story is so interesting to me. Hmm. It it is amazing. It's wow. it's a great show. Seriously, cool. Very well done. We'll have, have to check, check that out after out. after the gentleman. Uh, can you, are you one of these guys that could watch multiple shows at the same time? Yeah, I'm not. Me either. I got to get through one, I then I'm to. starting something. Fresh. No, That's it. no, I could, I could, I could. Really? Nah. What do they call that? The bandwidth? I got it. I can do that with books. I can't do it with TV. See, now. Now that, I can't do that. I, can't, I couldn't do that with books. Yeah. No Not way. novels. I mean, I can't I, open I a book. I read two or three books at the same time, but one novel that I'm reading and then two other books that I'm, you know, oh. whatever happens to hit me that I'm mm, in the mood impressive. to watch. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, big reader. Um. All right. And uh, usually, Freddie, like I said, we wind down the show. We talk about you know, I think watch anything good lately, and then we also talk about what's the best thing we ate this week. Best thing you ate, Freddie. Hit it. Let's 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 hear about some. Uh, I had some um, whole food meal. Yeah, we we uh, were invited to my brother in law's for St. Patrick's Day on Sunday, and my wife. We like to bring something that you know, you can plant based whole food. She found something over uh, this this uh, called. Forks Over Knives. It's a whole food plant-based show. It's a TV show that you can watch. It's great. It's really fantastic. It's on Netflix. And they also have a cookbook, Forks Over Knives. She got a green it's a green soup. It's it's kale and spinach and Swiss chard and uh, peas and, and potatoes. It it was the best thing we've tasted in, in really? five months. It was delicious. Wow. And it was it was so green. It was perfect. No one else liked it. We went to, went to the house, but it was so fucking green. It was perfect. You know, it was, it was great. To say and that was my follow-up question. Did, like, did, did anybody else at the party no, try it? But we loved it. Like, so, like, look at that green soup. Freddie and his wife are in the corner. He's like, oh my god, it's the best thing ever. High five in, right? I had three helpings of it. No one else liked it, but and it was perfectly green, so everyone really appreciated that. That's awesome. Uh, anyway, that was the the one thing I liked. Okay. Yeah. Michael. Um, so I honestly, I should say my mother's, uh, corned beef and cabbage that she cooked and it, it was delicious, the bomb. But, uh, I, I actually went out to dinner a couple of days before that with my mother and my wife uh, to La Volpe. And, oh, uh, I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Santa Marichas. Marichas, yeah. Great place. And I had the, um, it's the black squid. Oh, yeah. Linguini with, with the, the clams, the clams so and mussels. Yeah, that yeah. sounds fucking delicious. Yeah, it, it, was, it was. It um, was. I've had it. Definitely delicious. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. You know, the place this is the second time Mike has brought this restaurant up. You like oh, this place? I've Ready? been there um, twenty five times. Always a great meal. So the pizza place in the front of it is called Anton's, right? Right. right. Which I I enjoy. I never tried the pizza. Yeah. Really. Ooh. Very good. The regular pie. Uh, I haven't, I, I haven't had the regular there. I get some like a chicken parm slice or something like that, okay. but, uh, very, very good. I have not had a slice of pizza in three years. Wow. Uh, or a hot dog. You can make like crazy. cauliflower hot pizza dogs or something? Go fuck themselves. Yeah, I, I can never eat a hot dog and I'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, cauliflower pizza. No, we, we, uh, we cauliflower, we eat buffalo cauliflower in the, in the air cooker. You know, oh, have, okay. all kinds of crazy good stuff that we're eating now, but, uh, you ever like have a midnight snack or no? Yeah. No. no. No, I've oh, all, all my bad habits are pretty much over. Yeah. You know, for now. I mean, it's one day at a time. I mean, I go, I wake up to go pee, and I'm like, "Fuck off!" I'll take a handful of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm passing it. <laughs> uh, uh, Joey, what's the best thing you ate? Uh, dude, I've never been to IHOP before until uh, two nights ago. Oh, wow. breakfast for dinner up there. Yeah. Uh, 
it it hit really good, man. I wow. got I got the biggest thing on the menu, and it did not disappoint. It was like hungry wow. man. What'd you get? I got eggs, bacon, fake sausage, uh, French fries, toast, and a short stack. Wow, nice. It was inside my window, so <laughs> <laughs> I let it rip. There you nice, go. <laughs> good. You gotta try that blueberry pancakes. Over good. There. Oh my god, really? Oh my god. Gabe, what about you, bub? So I uh, went and got my compound bow restrung for hunting season oh my this God. year. We saw that thing, Gabe. You got to put a picture of that thing up. Okay. Yeah, I don't have Amazing. one readily available. Actually, but just I'll put take it, in... it and go shoot something right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, on the way back, uh, we stopped at this Irish pub. It's called London's. And I had the patty melt for St. Patrick's Day. And it was phenomenal. It's one of the wow. best patty melts I've, I've had in a long time. Nice. Perfect. Very cool. Very cool. Myself, um, I got two things, okay? And they were both on the same day, all right? Sunday, um, my wife got up and uh, decided to make chocolate chip banana pancakes. Oh, man. For the house, nice. Okay? With some uh, with some sausage links. And I just haven't had that in a long time, and it was it was fantastic. Fantastic. How many did you eat? Pancakes? Yeah. Three. Three. Three okay. pancakes, yeah. Uh, that didn't help you get in the suit. No. <laughs> Freddie. <laughs> You gotta set those goals. Yeah, no. <laughs> you gotta start on a Monday. Yeah. Right. There was nothing I could do about but it. This, right? this, this, this is part of my sit. problem. I think I, I think our loved ones are are part of the yeah. problem, man. No question. You know what I mean? And, and Making we, banana chocolate them. chip pancakes. My kids. You know, what are you doing? Hold, hold, hold on. She can't eat them. That's right. So she's just fattening you up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, here, here you go. Here you go. I'm gonna eat this walnuts and raisins over here, but uh, you enjoy these. Your wife can't. Chip. Your wife you said can't two eat them. Things. She can't eat them because of uh, you know her allergy. Um, mm. You said two things. Yes, and the other same day. Um, actually, we got together. The three of us got together, and oh, you know what? I meant to send Gabe that picture. I don't have a picture. Sorry, of I'm gluten free. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the three of us we got together. We were at, uh, we went here to the local brewery, and we hung out, went to Avino's and stuff, but. When I got home, like she had me, she was cooking corned beef. Uh, See, Patrick's Day. Uh, so she made this corned beef Reuben. I'm telling you, I, I only eat it once a year. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's phenomenal. It's corned beef. Okay. She gets this thick bread. Yeah. Rye bread or? No, it's, 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 I don't, it's not really rye. I don't know what kind, of, exactly what kind it is, but it's a thick, I mean, it's, 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 it's like sourdough. It, it's like this big. Yeah. Freddie, what are you thinking right now? <laughs> He's like, I hate you guys. He's a fat motherfucker. He's like, I had a chickpea corned beef fucking melt the other day. <laughs> what are you talking about? Freddie had a fucking bowl of green stew to himself, him and his wife, right? Oh, I, had, we, I had corned beef. I, I, it's the first time I've had corned beef in, in, uh, since I've been on this. It was good. It was, But I paid for it the next morning. Oh, the, I was it, up a couple pounds. Hold on. There's Gabe's bow, huh? Look at that. Look at this guy. That's a, that thing is fucking huge. I plan on killing a lot of animals this year with that wow. thing. <laughs> How heavy is that? The bow itself only weighs maybe four pounds, five pounds ish. Uh, the pull weight of it is uh, fifty six pounds right now. The draw is fifty six pounds, but I plan to go up to about seventy. Gabe said he got a call from uh, John J. Rambo asking if you borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> Thing's no joke. Is there a scope on that fucking thing? <laughs> yeah, there's a sight on it. Uh, um, it's, a, so it's a five pin sight. Best thing I ate, sweet Gabe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so she makes she makes the corned beef, but she makes it so to- she toasts the spread, and then it's corned beef, pastrami, bacon, oh, wow. Swiss cheese, bacon, oh, sweet- piled up. Oh my god, oh, my god dude. bacon. Yeah, Ooh. that's what I went home to. And after I saw you guys, yeah, did she eat that too? No. Oh See? yeah, no, no, no. She'll eat on on, on just different bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good for yeah. you, bro. That yeah. sounds delicious. It was phenomenal. Swiss uh, cheese. Swiss cheese. And that was the best thing I ate this week. Yeah, Fantastic. Um, all right. So that leaves us real quick, guys, with our uh, brew crew email. Brew crew email. You get email? We get email from uh, from loyal listeners. Nice. Right? Okay. So you can write in. Maybe one day, maybe one day you'll write in. Okay. <laughs> Brew crew at beers and BS. He's going to write in. What the fuck did you eat last week, guys? <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, live vicariously through us. Guys, every week we read, you know, um, the Brew Crew email from our loyal listeners. Mike, what's our Brew Crew email? Uh, that is the Brew Crew at beers and BS.com. Okay. And 
Joey, where can you find us? Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Spotify, Apple. Welcome. Uh, iHeartRadio. Cool. You've got mail. Uh, all right. First one. You too. This is actually the first one's from a, a, a local loyal listener, okay? And that's oh. Vicky from Bellport. Vicky. Okay? Vicky. Rocking from our hometown, okay? Mix. Vicky from Bellport. Vicky has uh, said in uh, the email that she listens to us on her walks, okay? And that she really enjoys us. There you go. Okay. First question. Vicky from Bellport. If you can have any animal as a sidekick for a day, which animal would you choose and why? Wow. Freddie, would you like to start or? Sure, I'll start. I, I actually, uh, I learned a technique years ago, uh, visualization. I read this book, Visualization for Change. And the guy said, uh, if you want to find your guide, imagine yourself in a nice spot where you love being on the beach, wherever, and then call the universe and have your guide. And whatever shows up, ask that thing, that person, that inanimate object, that animal, that woman, whatever, are you my guide until they say yes? And a woman came out of the water toward me and I was about to ask her and she kept moving and I was following her like this and it was a male lion on the beach. Hmm. And I said, are you my guide? And the male lion said, nodded. And I've followed the male lion 10 different times in different views. That's my guide now. And I, I could write a whole book on where it has taken me. So no question about it. If there was any uh, animal for a sidekick, it would be that male lion. And nice. the reason is uh, because it takes me places I otherwise wouldn't go. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Great, Great answer. The mighty yeah. lion. Yeah. Michael. Um, well, Vicky, I, I actually um, I actually got to live out my dream and, and, and actually do this. Um, the, the animal that I would love for a psychic is today. His name is Adrian. And, you know, I, I, I've had the pleasure of taking him to many events in my life. And it, it worked, worked. he's my guy. He's my guy. It worked out fine. So thank you for giving me a question. <sighs> Otherwise, I would replace him with a chimpanzee, I think, you know? Yeah. Wow. Call him Bobo. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Bobo. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Bobo. Th thanks, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Joey, what do you got, buddy? I mean, listen, this isn't this is an unusual question. Uh, off the cuff, I think if I had to pick an animal that I want next to me for a day, I, I think I'm going gorilla. Wow. You know, if silverback. I, I think it would be a good companion, and I think you know, if I had a if I had to get anybody out of the way, it would it would be there for me to help me. So you want to bring it to those those, those kids that are bullying you? Yeah. <laughs> you want to bring it around? Yeah. yeah. I'm going gorilla. <laughs> Joey's like, I'm not taking the long way home anymore. <laughs> okay. I got the gorilla. <laughs> Gabe, what about you, pal? Oh, God. That's a really good question. I'm going to have to either say a spider monkey <laughs> or um, I'll bring my... My dog that passed away a couple of years back, I'd bring him back to life. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I almost said my dog. Nice. Nice. Uh, for me, Freddie, I'm with you, buddy. I'm going to lion. Lion. Okay. Lion. Not for the same story. Okay. But I would want to put a saddle on this thing and ride it oh, like yeah. fucking He-Man did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Green tiger, right? What was yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, what was the tag tiger? I forget the tiger's name, but that's what I picture. Yeah. And I picture riding that thing through town. Battle cat. Yeah. Battle cat. Battle cat. Yeah. Yeah. Good go. job, Gabe. Did you look that up, Gabe, or you knew that? No. I always knew that. Wow. I love that cartoon. <laughs> um, and yeah, I know I know it wasn't a lion. I know it was a tiger, but yeah. I would ride I put a saddle on and be a lion. Yeah. And I'd ride that thing through town. Yeah. Cool. That's why. So great question, Vicky, from Bellport, once again our hometown. Thanks, Thanks for writing Vicky. Vic. Vicky, keep listening. We appreciate it. Uh guys, guys I got one more. Um Freddie, this one's from uh, Barbara from Mastic. Yeah, <laughs> so there it is. How much is that? Seventeen hundred dollars? No, what's Australian AD? dollars? Yeah. Oh, Australian. Okay. Um, <laughs> Barb. <laughs> our last one is from our most loyal listener. Okay. Hi, Barb. Barb writes in every week. Okay, nice. and that's Barbara from Mastic. All right. Hi, Barb. Hey, Barb. Um, Barbara from Mastic writes, if you can uninvent one thing in the world just to see what chaos would ensue, what would it be? Mm. I'm going to change the direction. I'm going to start with Joseph. Um, I mean, I'm going to go with the obvious here, and I think uh, cell phones. Mm. Cell phones. Okay. 
Very good. I I I agree. That was one of mine, and I absolutely think it would exactly it would cause chaos. Yeah. I, I was thinking internet. It's on the same level. Yep. Yeah. Same level. That's what I was thinking. Fred? I'm going a little deeper. I, I'm saying electricity. Ooh. If we can uninvent electricity. Yeah. See the chaos. Absolute chaos. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. You imagine. Yeah. That would be more chaotic than you, no now, cell phone. Chaos. We've lived in a world without a cell phone and internet. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. We right. haven't lived in a world. In our day, we, yeah. we, we didn't have PCs when I first started yeah. doing appraisals. We were on typewriters. You know, but electricity, Man. rubbing those sticks together for a little heat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gabe, what about you, bud? You guys took all the, my all the good answers, so I'm gonna go <laughs> um, medicine. I was gonna say vaccine. Wow, medicine. medicine! Wow, that is a good one. It's a very good one. That is a good one. I'm gonna go with the automobile. Mm. Mm. Right. Think about that. Yeah, I know. Right. So think about how the Freddie would be fine. He would just walk there. <laughs> so true. So true. I mean, but just think about how dependent we are on our vehicles. Yeah, I know. You know it's what true. I mean? No, it's I mean, true. like, you know, has your car ever broke down? You know, I mean, probably not recently. I'm saying, oh, well, oh, Mike, you ran out of gas right a few times. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. Re recently. Just think of how much time you spend in your car. Too. Yeah, it's true. That's that's. Uh, you be riding on a horse, or you're lying. Yeah, yeah. or a train. Or you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, cool. Barbara from Mastic. As Barbara. always, great question. Barb. Great, Barb. Um, and that's how we wrap things up, Freddie. Real quick, go through your plugs. Let's promote what you got coming up. You know, I uh, if if anyone's interested in, in having me bring into their organization, to their company, uh, give me a call. Or get, where? Get but, but, well, uh, not, you know, you don't have to give your cell phone number. Well, but where? Get you're, you know, in touch with you guys. You okay. know, get in touch with me. If they want to have me into their organization for a little lunch and learn, a little speak, uh, I'll come in. I'm, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Yeah, The book will be out soon and I'll be promoting it. But for now, uh, I'm hanging tough and, uh, you know, with my, my, my day gig writing. Yep. Uh, and uh, I'll be out promoting this stuff. So thanks for the opportunity. But if, if, if people want to uh, bring me in, no charge, I'll come in, give a little rah-rah speech, get them think and grow fit thinking growth in whatever uh, i'm happy to do that i do that a lot with the uh, companies uh, so uh, yeah have them get in touch with beers and bs and uh they'll get in touch with me awesome awesome, awesome. seriously freddie uh we, we thank you so much thank i mean you, 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 you are truly uh an inspiration it is so impressive you know uh the change you have made and what you have done Definitely. what you accomplished you appreciate know? that I had a lot of fun today here guys and got a great gig here so thank, thank you. you this was a lot of thank fun you. It was. thank you was yeah absolutely um so yeah, yeah, guys, uh, be on the lookout for uh, Think and Grow Thin. The uh, book should be coming out sometime end this the, year, end uh, of the year, by the end of the year. Yep. Okay, and then also um, Fred Ford Life Success, yep. right? Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, come back and follow us and keep listening. And uh, you guys got anything else? No, we go episode twenty in the books. Whoop, whoop. Twenty. Right. We uh, we appreciate it, guys. Have a great night, Freddie. Thank you so much. All right, yes. Peace. get home safe.